Okay, so if your dryer is powering up and clicking but not starting, we're gonna troubleshoot that for you today and figure out what's wrong with it. Okay, so we're gonna turn this dryer on and uh, see what happens here. Okay, we gotta get to the bottom of this. First, unplug the machine to avoid electrocution. And we're gonna slide it back so we can get behind it because there's a whole bunch of about quarter inch nuts here that we have to remove. There's two plates, and I forget how many, but a lot of quarter inch nuts here. There's one on either side over here. And then there's two more at a perpendicular angle for that same plate. Once we get those four eyes and it releases this plate, we move that out of the way, it exposes a nut over here and another one on the other side. And then there's a three more, I think, holding this other plate down. Gotta remove them all. They're all quarter inch nut, and then remove that second plate. Next, you're gonna take your putty knife and insert it underneath the left side and the right side of the console and release the spring clamp. Release the console by moving it towards you and up and flip it on its back to reveal the control board. Underneath the console, you'll find a text sheet for troubleshooting. Here, we're seeing how to test the door switch from the control board. It says to take one of your leads on your multimeter and put it in the white wire and the other one and put it in the tan and read for continuity. We have continuity, A-OK. -okay. The motor circuit is supposed to read in between one and six ohms. To read the motor circuit, we put one lead on the tan wire and the other one on the blue wire. That's definitely not one and six ohms. We got a bad motor circuit. In order to test all the loads within the motor circuit, we're gonna have to tear this machine down. So we're gonna show you step by step how to take it down, which parts to test, how to test them, and then um, fixing the machine and then putting it all back together again. After sliding the lid off to remove the front panel, there's four T20 Torx bit screws that need to come out. Then there are uh, two Phillips head screws holding them to the blower housing here. And then we're gonna switch back to that T20 and there's three more T20 across the top of the door opening here. Remove all those screws. And when we're done with that, we're gonna switch it back to a quarter inch. And then what I do is I prop the machine up on a two by four here, you see that? And there are four here. You just wanna loosen the two in the middle. Don't take them all the way out because there's a little slot there you can use to put it back on. And then the two, the one all the way on the right and the one all the way on the left, you remove all the way. You remove all those, put that hardware aside, and then you can free up the front panel to remove that. And then there's a door switch wire here, a wire harness you need to take off. I use the back end of my paint multi-tool here to pry that off, it comes really loose. And then just put that front panel to the side. To get the drum out, we have to remove the front bulkhead. There's four quarter inch sheet metal screws, one in each corner of the bulkhead that we have to remove. You can remove them all, there's little pegs that hold it in. And then there are two more quarter inch holding the blower housing to the blower. Right there, you can see that. One there, and then there's another one on the underside of the blower housing that you can see me getting over here. Remove all those, and then we're gonna remove that bulkhead by lifting it up and putting it out to the side. Next, we're gonna reach under the drum and release the tension on the on the belt. So take your right hand and move the pulley towards your left hand, towards the right hand side of the screen to relieve the tension. And that allows you to get the belt off the motor spindle. When removing the drum, lift up on the belt to make sure it doesn't get snagged on anything. Thermal cutoff, thermistor, thermostat on the heating assembly, tensioner pulley with switch and motor. First, we're gonna check our thermal cutoff by removing the wire harnesses here. Then we're gonna set our multimeter to tone, and then we're gonna check it. It should beep, and we don't get a beep, so that's a bad thermal cutoff. Then we're gonna check the thermistor by setting our multimeter to ohms reading. It's supposed to read between nine and 11 ohms. We have 12.85. We also have a bad thermistor. So we're gonna change both those out, going out to the vehicle here. There's both the new ones. We're gonna bring those inside. See that, you beep, it's a good one. Check this for ohms, 10.10, .10. perfect. 
So we're gonna put both those in. Got to remove these other ones with the quarter inch nut driver. There's one on the thermal cutoff and you got two on the thermistor. So put that thermal cutoff back in, the one with the tone, with continuity. Reattach that with the quarter inch. Remember to reconnect the wire harness to the thermal cutoff. And then we're going to remove the thermistor here, two quarter inch. And put the new one in, secure it with the two quarter inch. And don't forget to reconnect the wire harness to the thermistor. It's horrible if you put this machine all back together and forget to connect the wires. Here you can see the heating assembly. We want to check the heating element itself first, remove these two wires, and then you're going to do a continuity check on tone. And we have no tone, so that's a bad heating element. Then we're going to check the thermostat, remove both wires, check that for continuity. That's good. And last, we're going to check this other high limit cutoff. And that's good as well. We have continuity on that. Looking inside, you can see that the heating element itself shorted to the housing of the heating assembly. So we're going to have to change out that heating element. There's a quarter inch that removes this one here. And then we're going to use a quarter inch to remove both the thermostat and the high limit attached to the heating assembly. There's one on each. You can leave those wires plugged in and just unfasten those quarter inch. Then take both hands and pull the assembly straight out. When we flip it over, there's one more quarter inch on the bottom that we're going to remove. Pull that out of the way, exposing the heating element. And then it's stuck because one of the coils fused to the housing. So we're going to have to take our snips and we're going to cut that out. And then remove it. Then here you can see the certified. There, there's a link in the description to this part. That's the part number. This is the heating element. We're going to set that to tone, test it. That's a good element. So this just slides right in. Now I recommend wearing gloves. I didn't wear gloves here, but I'm used to getting cuts, but you definitely get cuts doing here what I did. Make sure it slides all the way forward. So the screw hole aligns so you can permanently fasten right there. You see the screw hole. That's a quarter inch. Drive that home. Slide the cover back in. Put the quarter inch on the bottom. Fit it back into the exhaust vent. Slides right in there. And then take your stubby and you're going to fasten the heating assembly back down to the body of the machine. Reattach the wire harness to the heating element and then refasten the thermostat and the high limit with those quarter inch. Remember, you don't want to forget. You don't want to put this whole thing up together and then remember to reattach these wires. So that's all good. Now we're going to reassemble this. Now you can just reverse engineer us taking it apart or you can watch this. I've got a couple minutes showing you how to reassemble the machine here. It's pretty self-explanatory. Besides this belt tension, if you haven't done this before, this is interesting. You take the tensioner pulley, move it towards the wall, hold tension on it, leaving slack in the belt and then get that belt around the motor spindle and make sure that belt is all the way around. You see that now it's all the way around. Give the drum a couple turns, make sure the belt is in the center, and then reassemble the machine. Now this dryer should work like new again. So we replaced the thermal cutoff, the thermistor, and the heating element. What probably happened was the heating coil warped over time, 
touch the exterior of the heating assembly wall and then shorted and that probably caused the fuse to blow and possibly the thermistor to go out of whack but now that we traded out all three of those it should be working as good as new now if you found this content useful please hit that like button leave a comment down below if you have any questions if you have a friend who's having problems with their dryer share this with them and get out and get some people it's a beautiful day